A good scale is one that uses up most of the graph paper. We usually work backwards. We will draw the graph first, then after that, we will erase the, uh, we will find the amount of squares that's required, then we will erase the graph away, then we will be like, okay, this is the space we will give students. Okay? So usually you can max out the space. What makes a good scale max out the space? How much of the space try to use up your graph to take out around three quarters of all the squares? Okay? To take out around three quarters of all the squares. Is your graph tiny? If it takes up half, also not push up. Take three quarters. Make it big. Okay. Another thing about scale. No odd scale. I'm going to show you what an odd scale is now. You know, each, uh, when you look at your graph paper, it comes with small little squares, right? Okay, so let's say you label it this way. Right? I'm going to draw individual small squares now on the side. Okay, one small square, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's say I have this number of squares. I'll just zoom in. Huh? So let's say you decide to label your square this way. One, two, three, and they label it as one. One, two, three, then two, and so on and so forth. What's an odd scale? An odd scale is something like that. If you were to try to now find out what is the unit for one square, what will be the unit for one square? Okay, 0 0.3333333 is onwards and onwards and onwards. What is this called in math? Irrational. Irrational? I don't know, I see irrational in another class and it's me. is it? That's not irrational. Then what is it? They say it's recurring. Fair enough. I don't know, huh? I need to pay off for it. Okay? Oh. So if you take one divided by three, you'll get a recurring decimal place. You just keep going on and on. That means to say, uh, you actually cannot plot your points accurately. Yeah? If I were to ask you to plot, plot um, now each unit over here, let's say you want to plot a point over here, right? So you're not plotting exactly anymore. This is a recurring number. It's very hard for you to plot an exact number in this case anymore. Okay? So if you want to check if you have an odd scale, you go and take your label of units at the side, and then go and divide by the number of squares that you represent. And if you get a recurring number, that's an odd scale. Okay? Then it's very hard for you to do a good plot. Okay? One, two, three. P. P for data points. P for data points. If you plot all the points, and I want you to plot the points not in a dot, not in a plus, but use X. Okay, use X to plot the graph. It's easier for the marker to see your X than a cross or a dot. So I have to tell you, uh, you can actually get 4 out of 5 without even drawing the graph. Right now. So, you do your best to get 4 out of 5. Because these 4 marks don't test anything at all. Right now. These 4 marks are just admin marks. Set everything up just so that you can draw the graph. Right? S, uh, S is to set up the scale. There's no drawing per se. Yeah, S is to set up the scale, the scale of the, uh, the entire graph. Oh, S, axis is just labeling, you want to label the axis. Yeah? So actually you can get four marks without even drawing the graph out. Okay? So, sometimes graph drawing is difficult, but know that the, the minimum you can get is four out of five. Yeah? Graph drawing may be difficult, but the minimum you can get is four out of five. So let's go to the last point, graph drawing. I will mark that as VM, VM for best fit. For best fit graph, there's one thing that we always look out for is this, no extra collation. Do you know what this means? Yeah, okay. Extra collation means that you overshoot the data points that you have. 
Actually, I don't think I saw anyone do extrapolation. Yeah, I think you have to reach your comfortable stage of not doing that. Okay, extrapolation. So what would that look like? Do you want to take this down? If you have not taken this down, how to check my odd scale? So it's not what? Ah, that's it. Okay, so... I'm going to draw in some points now. One point, two point, three, four. Okay, a best fit graph. We'll go, try to go through most of them. One that extrapolates will be one that extends beyond the point. This is extrapolation. Okay, if you extrapolate, you will not get a best fit graph. Okay, we will mark you down for that. How do you tell if you are supposed to draw a straight line or curve? Okay. If after drawing a straight line, you realize that there are too many points very far off. So for example, if you try drawing a straight line, let's say you try to draw a straight line, huh? because your teacher may have told you to draw a straight, straight line by straight, you need to have like equal number of points on both sides. Okay, so let's try that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I'm gonna try that three, a top three below. So, wow, you have to do that. Uh. Okay, I try that. Uh. Okay, so uh, usually if something is a curve and you try to draw a straight line, you will find that there will definitely be some points that are really far away from the graph. Okay, a fair speed curve or graph or straight line always has the points quite close to it. They may not be directly crossing the point, but they have to still be quite close. They cannot be so far off. Do the curves need to go this way or this way? No, it can be an S. It can take many forms. Okay, so curves need not always be a very smooth curve this way. It can take several bends. Yes? Connect the dots, so we get the dots. Uh, okay. <coughs> Is it okay to connect the dots? Okay. Uh, at the A level side, they're not marked down for connecting the dots. Okay. But could I request that you do that in, in your most desperate movements? Okay. Um, whatever points we give you should allow you to draw either a curve or a straight line. Okay. Unless the data came from yourself, then it is likely to be wonky. Right, but if we provide you the data, you usually can get a curve or a straight line. So use the doctor to uh, connect the dots as the last resort for yourself. Okay? Okay, so that's curve drawing. I hope that you can, uh, at the very least, get these four. Yeah? The last one, then you, you worry a bit, lah, but try your best. Okay? Okay, so that's curve drawing or graph drawing. Uh, you can staple it to your chapter set, all the way in the back. Okay, I won't collect it now, now. I'd like to move on to our next chapter, the final chapter for the mid-year. I'd like to orientate you to let you know where we're going to stop for your mid-years. We're actually not going to do the entire book. Okay, so maybe that feels a little bit better. Okay, where do we start the, the next chapter? So you know, yeah, Page 84 begins the new chapter. Or oh, I may say 83 actually. It is very important uh, that you look through the learning outcomes. Page 83 is where the learning outcomes are. Never skip this. We always, you know, if you feel that biology is too overwhelming, there are too many things to study, Look at the learning outcomes. When we send questions, we are bound by it. Yeah? Anything beyond this is unfair to you. Okay, so that it gives you scope. If you feel like you cannot uh, you have too many things. I ever had one student who did this, I felt like I may have said this to you before, who wrote down all the learning outcomes. This was last, you know, this was in 2019. You all know Samantha, the track you Samantha. She she wrote down all the learning outcomes. Uh, of every chapter in JH4 and those that said JH3 and then she answered all of them. You did that?
for him to say anything. Yeah. So he went to do quite well. Uh, this was one of the methods. It's a very painful method. But I tell you, uh, it's less painful if you work together. Think about it. Right? If you want to decide to work together as a class, each person takes three quest three learning outcomes, the three all can work together right, if you want to. Yeah, then it's not so painful. Okay, so page 83 is where we will begin. Where will we stop? We will complete up to my we will complete mitosis. We will not go to meiosis. So which page is that? <coughs> yeah, around 96. Around page 96. So page 83 to page 96, that's around 13 pages. Okay, 13 pages for the remaining weeks before your mid years. Okay, remember, the aim for biology is to be consistent. That's all. The more consistent you are, the less painful it is. Because I understand, biology requires quite a bit of memory work. Okay, it's not good. Okay, so that's where we will begin and where we're going to go in the next few weeks. You want to get a preview of what you want, you can read up on, go to the schedule. Okay, today we are going to learn how DNA replicates. But before we do that, uh, we are going to watch a video first. Okay, to begin our chapter.
actually the, the, the sped up video took around, if you watch the full one, uh, no, if you watch it on uh, YouTube, it's nine minutes. I went to speed it up even more. Uh, so if not, you can actually watch it go a little bit slower, and it's quite beautiful to watch. Uh, we are starting a new chapter. This chapter is called the Cell Cycle. This chapter is called The Cell Cycle, and whatever you just watched, I've just given you a preview of what we're going to learn. Right? But from the very beginning, you saw that the male released a small endosperm pulp, a packet. Actually, why can't animals uh, then do that? You go everywhere? But this one also goes everywhere, right? They release into the water, then like... It'll be on the floor. So what? Next time the female I walk over and then drop the egg there. Yeah. Now I'm asking you, why why can't animals on land carry out uh, reproduction this way? Sorry? Other people will eat the seeds. <laughs> a lot of 
of time growing. Okay? What is growing for? We'll come to it in a bit. The cell grows. What happens when it grows? Well, it produces more cytoplasm, more organelles. And all this in preparation of a special part of the cell cycle. If you look at the cell cycle, you see that there's this phase called mitosis. Yeah? Mitosis. During mitosis, uh, something special happens. The cell begins and prepares to divide. Okay? The cell prepares to divide. Mitosis and cytokinesis together is the process where the cell divides into two. Okay? So then, the question for you is this. Why does the cell need to grow first, produce double the amount of its DNA before it divides? Okay, I must say, so that when it splits, it still remains the same. Same in what sense? The cellular content? The, the amount of DNA, perhaps? Imagine now a cell, you take a cell, Technically, if you skip the G1, the S, and the G2, you end up with a cell that after dividing into two, becomes slightly smaller. Because I'm just sharing everything. If I go through the same cycle again, each cell will become even smaller. We have another issue. If the cell has X number of, X amount of DNA, if it goes through one round of division, I'll get half the amount of DNA. It goes through another round of division, you get one quarter the amount of DNA. The cell becomes more and more useless. Okay? But that's where we're going to dive into for this particular chapter. In this chapter, we're going to introduce to you two forms of cell division. The first form is called mitosis. The second form is called meiosis. Mitosis and meiosis. Yeah. Mitosis and meiosis. Okay, the two kinds of cell division. This is something that we will continue on, but it's not going to be assessed for medias. This is our focus for your medias. Okay. So actually, if you want to start revision, you've already started, right? You've already started for all the chapters. The only chapter left is mitosis. Okay. So, uh, there's a slight difference. Cells go through different forms of cell division for different reasons. Uh, if we look at the video that we just watched, right? Uh, you notice that there are sperms and eggs. Meiosis is a process that allows you to form gametes. For example, sperms and eggs. That's what meiosis is for. Mitosis. It's a process of cells dividing to form identical cells. Divide to form identical cells. And we use these cells for growth, for repair. And these are examples of why we want to re uh, divide cells to form identical cells. Maybe I slap your face really hard. And a lot of cells get damaged and they die. 
you want to replace the cells with the same phase cells, right? Okay, so mitosis is for that. We divide to produce cells that are identical. Meiosis, it divides, but it doesn't form cells that are identical. Each sperm is a little bit different, but we will focus on that later on in the chapter. Okay, so the key here is this. We want to form cells that are identical to each other. I don't want to slap you in the face and everyone knows pop out as it feels. Huh? We want exactly the same thing coming back. So what's the value of this cycle? Uh, it's important for you to know the sequence of when each thing takes place. Okay? The cell does need to grow and to synthesize new DNA before it can start to divide. The mitosis and cytokinesis part. But actually, that's not our focus for today. Today, we're not going to focus on the dividing part. We're going to focus instead on the other parts first. Collectively, I will call all of them together as interphase. Like intermission. Okay, this is the intermission before the cell really starts to divide. We call it in the interface. And during intermission, the cells grow, they produce new DNA. And we're going to focus on interface today. We're not going to focus on the actual dividing part.
Yes. Okay. Uh, cytokinesis is the is the state where the cell actually splits into two. Okay. Mitosis is a preparation to split. Claudia. 
KMYC. KMYC, the double helix. Okay, we have number one and one. It's helicase. KMYC, the double helix. Next enzyme. Jihan. Primates. Okay, what's the function of primates? As around 5 to 10 ribonucleotide via complementary base pairing. We'll see what that looks like in a while. But we have primates as the next enzyme. Okay, next enzyme. Kabish. The name DNA polymerase, polymerase means to make a polymer. So that's the function of it. It makes new DNA. Okay? Uh, Kabish also gave us a little tease. He said DNA ligates. Right? You said DNA ligates. Okay, DNA ligates. What's the function of DNA ligates? What do you read? Catalyzes the formation of phosphodiester bonds between molecules. It catalyzes formation of phosphodiester bonds. Okay, so we have several players now. If you read very carefully, you will see that in the last paragraph they say that there are different kinds of DNA polymerase. And they say some DNA polymerase help to do something else. Okay? So you read very carefully, yeah? there are two kinds of DNA polymerase. This is roughly the sequence of enzymes you're gonna use today. Okay, the sequence of enzymes you're gonna use today. Let's go. Oh. 
part of the, uh, the paragraphs. So what the next part of the paragraph say? Uh, this short strand of RNA is called ribosome as an anchor for two of two ribonucleotides to be added to the same ribose end of the RNA ribose. Okay, so we've created an anchor of sorts through which you can add some deoxyribonucleotides. Okay, so actually what we are doing here is really creating anchor points for us to add some deoxyribonucleotide to make DNA. We have just created an anchor point. Now is the real synthesis of DNA. Let's bring in DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase now comes in. It is stand by and it reads the template strand. We call the, the strand that is reading the template. It reads the template strand up. Now it's going to begin its real magic. It's going to synthesize DNA. How is it going to do that? It's going to read the template strand and slowly add DNA, deoxyribonucleotide, to the 3 3 prime end of the RNA primer. Right? Can you see the 3 prime end and 5 prime end? The 5 and the 
delta 3. Uh, we can only elongate DNA from the 3 onwards, not in the 5 direction. Always elongate from the 5 to 3 direction. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now, DNA polymerase reads the T and it will add up Add up G. They will add a G. Pop up. It reads the G and it's going to add up C. C. Notice that I'm adding DNA in a particular direction. I'm always adding it in the 3 prime end. Essentially, I'm elongating the DNA in a 5 prime to prime direction. Do you read that in your textbook? Yeah. We are elongating DNA in a five prime to three prime direction. I'm going to add some more. Okay, watch up. The DNA polymerase continues on. I'm going to add some more. Okay. No. I'm going to add some more. Synthesize a little bit more of DNA. There's complementary base pair to it. Do you understand when it says that synthesizing DNA in a 5 prime to 3 prime direction? Yeah? Then if I say that it's synthesizing in a 5 prime to 3 prime direction, how will I describe how I'm reading the template? Okay? I'm reading the template in a 3 to 5 direction. But I'm making new DNA in the 5 to 3 direction. Can yeah, I say again for those that missed it? I am reading the template strand from the 3 to the 5. But I'm making a new strand in the 5 to 3. Okay? But that, the direction is important. How you phrase it. Anyone kind of lost a lot over there? Oh, 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 over here. Meaning? Okay, what happens after the primer? The primer basically just serves as an anchor point for me to add DNA now. I'm now going to build DNA using the primer. I just add on, it's like an anchor. Yes. Yes. And then the RNA serves as an, as an anchor for me to now add the real thing I want, which is DNA. Yeah, it's very short. It's just to anchor it as a starting point. And now I can start to build the DNA. Yeah? Sorry? Okay, Kayan has just asked. Then this new strand that I've synthesized, right? Does the RNA become part of the DNA now? Does that mean now the new DNA strand has RNA inside? It's a bit weird. Then I'm not creating an exact copy. Right now. So, you read your textbook, what does it say? How can we fix this problem? Does it attempt to fix the problem? Anyone found the solution? How does it fix the problem? I created a strand that is not quite the same. <laughs> As the original, right? I have now RNA part of my DNA, which is weird. How can we fix this? Anyone found a solution to it? Any merit? DNA what? Okay. So actually, we have different kinds of DNA polymerase. Some of them are used to build the initial one. Some of them are used to replace RNA for the primers. Yeah, so here I have another DNA polymerase that can do the job of replacing these fellas. So let's replace. Let's replace this particular one with this. Let's replace the U with a T. Let's replace the C with a C. Guess what? That's it. You just created a new strand of DNA. But imagine 
imagine this happening uh, across the entire length. We do the same process across the entire length. Uh, but what I've just shown you is just a small snippet. Okay? So essentially the idea is this. RNA primer creates an anchor, primase creates an anchor, wants to synthesize new DNA. Then the DNA polymerase comes in to replace the primer with DNA. Yes. Actually, there are different names. I can tell you the different names, but you do not need to know them. Um, this DNA polymerase is called DNA delta. This DNA polymerase that helps to create the first strand is called DNA alpha. Okay? But you do not need to know this. Just know that it's different DNA polymerase. Yes? So, what happens when the white DNA? Oh, where does all these come from, right? Uh, from the food. 
Yeah, so you need to eat a variety of foods. Some foods come with not just lipids, protein, some with also fat. Yeah, yes? So the second DNA or the replacement rival Yet? 
selenium attached to the main DNA strand, uh, then that's the job. Like this, job is just to form phosphodiester bond, to link up the nucleotides together. Okay, so phospho DNA like this, just make sure all the phosphodiester bonds are formed. Yes. Thank you. 